Portland resident Laura Stanfield's debut novel, Singing Lessons for the Stylish Canary, is available now. And the novelist, publisher, mom, award-winning journalist, and sought-after speaker joins us now to tell us all about the new book and her projects that support the writing community. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Nicole. Huge congrats. This is a big deal. It's a huge deal. I've wanted a book out my whole life. Oh, well, well. And it finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> I love when we make dreams come true. This is so fun. So I want to hear about the new book and how did a high-pitched barrel organ help you find your voice as a novelist? Well, I wrote two books before this one and I really wanted them to sound like what I thought people in New York would want to hear and they didn't sell. So when I started working on this book and I discovered an object called the Serenette that was used to train canaries, I decided, oh, well, maybe this is my material. Mm -hmm. And 15 years later, out came a book. I love it. We never know where the inspiration is going to strike us, right? Totally. I found this word serenette in a glossary online, and it said, see bird organ. And I thought, well, what is a bird organ? <laughs> and then I fell into the research rabbit hole for years. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, I'm wondering, how do you train canaries to sing particular songs? Uh, you get an instrument such as this one and you play it over and over and over again until to a male canary <laughs> until the male canary actually starts reciting the melody. And you know, why do you think this book is resonating with so many people right now? I think uh, our pandemic times and things being really dire and full of grief and sadness Right, uh, readers have really wanted some uplift in their reading, and so my book is whimsical and fun, and I mean, there are canaries and canary <laughs> training it elements. Is. <laughs> it's whimsical and fun, and I'm curious about your writing process. Well, I've <laughs> I stop and start a lot, being a mom and a business owner, yep. but uh, I just keep going and eventually um, get to the end of my project so I love it you keep that checklist going like me I'll get to it you yeah, know exactly it, it, <laughs> exactly I've tried to write every day at the same time like lots of writers prefer that method and it just doesn't work for me oh and speaking of getting your book out into the world independent bookstores are so important to you so why is that well they're the backbone of our literary community people can come into independent bookstores and meet readers and writers and talk to each other and it's about community, it's about presence and people, and I think sometimes when we get stuck in the online world, we miss that. So independent bookstores are huge for, for the literary world. Yeah, it's in a great place where you hang out as well. Totally, I mean, yeah. So many friends from all the independent bookstores. I'm curious, you know, you're such a great supporter of the Northwest writing community. So what is it about writers that you think we can all help each other? Well, as, as you may know, when we're, <laughs> when we're sitting at home by ourselves on our computers working mm -hmm. on a piece of writing, uh, it can be really lonely and sad and a rejection can feel really discouraging. But if you go out into the world and connect with other writers and support them, it buoys spirits. Yes, and any advice for other writers? I mean, that's great right there. Just keep going and focus on the stories that you are meant to tell, not the stories that you think you ought to be telling. Ooh, I love that. Now, speaking of this, let's blow this up. I mean, Forest Avenue <laughs> Press, this is so cool. This is your publishing house. So how did your company come about? 10 years ago, I thought maybe I could make a book and nobody told me I couldn't. So I made a book <laughs> and now we have, I think, 25 out. So <laughs> amazing. What types of, you know, stories do you seek out? Literary fiction, occasionally a memoir, um, some speculative and fantasy as well. And do you just know it when you see it or how does that work? Yeah, I know it when I see it. And <laughs> I have a group of uh, readers who get together and help me go through the submissions so that everyone gets a really deep read and gets personalized feedback. So. Oh, I love it. It's just helpful throughout the whole process out great books. Anything else on the horizon that we should know about? Uh, I have a book called The Story of the Hundred Promises coming out in October. Uh, it's by Neil Cochran and it's a queer trans fantasy that re is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Ooh, a retelling? So that's one to look out for. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. You got to come back and talk about that. That is so fun. <laughs> this is so great, everyone. Huge congrats. Singing Lessons for the Stylish Canary is available now. And learn more information about Laura at laurastanfield.com. Plus, there's lots of great info there about the new book. And congratulations. Thanks for sharing. And you know what? Let's go train some canaries. You bet. <laughs> Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs>